Let's talk about how to actually uh, remove Chase collections from your credit report. And uh, so here's the overview I want you to pay attention to. So first of all, when you think about Chase collection, I want you to really clarify what Ch Chase collection collects. So Chase collection can actually be uh, be money that you owe to the bank. It could be money that uh, a third party bought from. Uh, it can be actually I mean an amount that you owe to uh, Chase that Chase actually sold to a third party. Or it could be actually uh, another institutions that, that, that's called Chase Collection. So be very clear about uh, what Chase Collection really means. If you ever find Chase Collections on your credit report, you got to have a clear idea what that really means. Okay. And uh, so this means what? It means that if Chase Collections is actually calling you, it means that either you owe money to Chase and you never really uh, paid the bank or you actually uh, owe an, a third party. Either way, you want to always contact, I mean, you want to make sure that uh, you want to validate the amount that you owe to Chase. In other words, make sure that you owe Chase the amount that it's saying you owe the company. And you also want to make sure that all uh, communications are done. All communications are done via letters. I mean, it's just a lot better to uh, don't do anything verbally. Don't do anything over the phone. You want to contact, you want to make sure that they actually contact you via, via regular letter. So Chase Collections will hurt your credit score. If you have Chase Collections on your credit score, it will hurt your, your, your credit score because it is a derogatory mark. Okay. So if the mark is still under its statute of limitations, it will severely hurt your credit score. So be very careful there. And so how do you actually remove Chase Collections from your credit report? It will depend. You have a couple of ways of, uh, of doing this. You can do this by contacting Chase directly. You, you can do this by actually uh, offering to pay the, the, uh, the company that's really uh, calling you. Like you can pay uh, pennies on the dollar. You don't have to pay the, the full amount or you can pay the full amount if you have the cash. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. Let me give you a few pro tips. So when we talk about how to remove Chase Collections from your credit report, it's important to really understand what Chase Collection really is. Is uh, You gotta ask yourself, are we talking about a debt collection agency? Yes or no, because Chase Collections can be coming from Chase itself or from a third party, right? So Chase Collections can be a debt collection agency. In other words, this is uh, this is this happens when the company buys debt from a number of uh, different creditors that have given up on trying to collect the amount themselves. And sometimes this is referred to as charge off. And now, should you pay for a delete with Chase Collection or should you pay the full amount? It really depends on uh, the, the, the amount. It also depends on the uh, conditions. So paying off Chase Collections to have credit bureaus deleted from your credit report seems ideal. Now, there is a problem though. Because paying a debt collections, uh, like paying a debt in collections, changes your credit report status from unpaid to paid. And that has consequences, especially if you are working on a new credit product. In other words, if you're applying for a credit card or a loan at the same time, this could be a problematic because your collections still appear on your report for seven years from the date of first delinquency. This means that your credit is still affected. So if you pay for a delay, you are still actually or having a detriment to your credit score. So be very careful as to what you really want. The best is to actually contact Chase, the bank, or the institution behind Chase Collections and have a conversation and know exactly how much you and know exactly how much you owe and have them remove the amount. So they will remove the amount so that the amount doesn't show up anymore as a uh, as a derogatory item on your credit report. So that, that's really great in terms of helping you. What I want to say is that there are situations where Chase Collections could be uh, actually a, a smaller amount. If it's, a, if it's a smaller amount, make sure that you uh, pay it off as soon as possible because smaller amount, if you think about interested 
interest compounding. A small amount can become a big amount, and you don't want that. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you about today's topic. We are having a conversation about how to remove Chase collections from your credit report. Now, in removing Chase collections from your credit report, you have a, a lot of scenarios that really are that appear on the horizon for you. You can, uh, in some cases, you can negotiate a settlement with Chase collection. It really depends. But remember, though, it really depends on the amount of uh, the amount of debt that you the initial amount of debt. Let's say if you owe one thousand dollars, it's just better to pay it off. But if you owe one hundred thousand dollars, then uh, they were talking right. You can negotiate a settlement in that case. Remember, though, selling your debts with Chase Collection may help your score, but it may also hurt your score depending on the situation. The answer depends on many variables. You may also not have to pay at all. And if any issues with uh, the account exist, you may have it removed altogether and never have to hear from them again. I mean, it's, it depends on the particular circumstances surrounding your uh, your chase collections uh, scenario okay but remember the bottom line here is that chase collection is not a fake or a scam chase collection is a legitimate company so but the the, the important element here is that you want to uh, validate the debt so if they say you owe one thousand dollars you want to uh, validate the, you, you gotta ask them to provide proof that you owe the debt indeed right if it's the bank that you were dealing with directly, it's a lot easier to talk to them and ask them what kind of uh, amounts do they owe you? Is it a credit card? Is it a loan? Is it a line of credit? Is it a mortgage? Is it a student loan or what have you? So, but the bottom line is the bottom line is you want to you want to validate the amount because you do not want to pay for an amount that is not yours. And uh, in removing chase collections from your credit report, you got to pay attention to the to the element of time. So. Sometimes if you have to uh, dispute the the debt, it may take 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, depending on your, on, the, on the situations. It's one of those things where you have to be really careful about which scenario applies to your situation. Let me give you the approach that you need to really, to really pay attention to. So when we talk about uh, removing Chase collections from your credit report, remember that Chase collections, if it's uh, the bank itself, they're not going to keep calling you. I mean, they will uh, let you know that, hey, listen, your account is in derogatory status, but they're not going to call you all the time. Now, if Chase collections actually uh, is a, a third party uh, company, yes, they'll be calling you. I mean, they'll be calling you and it basically they'll be calling and attempt to collect a debt. The best thing you can do is ignore it, actually their calls and speak with a company that can help you uh, get removed, get uh, the collections removed. I mean, you do not want to stress yourself out. I mean, owing, I mean, owing money already is already a stressful uh, enterprise. I mean, enterprise, a stressful uh, situation. You do not want to actually uh, have uh, just collections. Actually, you don't have to answer all questions that they have. What you can do is that you can contact Chase Collections once the debt is validated and ask them to uh, actually uh, send you everything in writing, right? Because there is a certain law, a certain piece of legislation that governs how Chase co how collections, debt collection is done in this country. So you, do, you want to put yourself uh, under uh, the coverage of the law. And, uh, and Chase Collection is not going to sue you or garnish your wages. Don't worry about that. I mean, the uh, threshold for suing or garnishing your wages really is kind of high, especially garnishing your wages. We are talking about very large amounts. So if you owe smaller amounts, you do not have to worry about having uh, a lawsuit from Chase Collections. I mean, it will cost them way more to sue you than the amount that you owe. But if the amount is consequential, if you if we're talking about uh, one hundred thousand dollars, for instance, then yes, we are talking about a very consequential amount. They might sue you, and they might even garnish. They might have a court of law actually decide to garnish your wages if it's uh, determined that you are making good money 
and you and you chose not to honor your debt. So that's a, a pretty specific situation. Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about how to remove cheese collections from your credit report. Now, there could be situation if you're trying to remove chase collections from your credit report, there could be situations where you are able to uh, have uh, the company accept a goodwill letter to remove your collections or charge off. This is totally possible, but you're going to have to negotiate with the bank because normally chase collections does not accept goodwill letters to remove collection accounts or charge offs in, uh, in most cases. And it's one of those things where you're going to have to negotiate. The question is, everything, again, revolves around the amount that you owe, right? If the amount is consequential, then uh, Chase Collection will be forced, if you will, to negotiate with you because they do not want to lose everything. But if the amount is smaller, then they think that they have a stronger hand, okay? A stronger hand to play in this case. So expect them to be a little tougher on you. And... uh so, so remember that Chase Collection actually can be uh, money that you owe the bank itself. If you owe Chase, like on a credit card or loan or line of credit, it's just a lot better to uh, negotiate with Chase directly. Don't have them sell the, the debt to a third party and the third party will try to collect the cash from you. That, that's really the worst case scenario because... Uh, Chase as a bank is one of the largest, it's actually the largest bank in the country. It's always better to have a good relationship with Chase than a bad one, right? Because they're not just uh, sort of uh, like if they actually uh, see you as a bad customer on the credit side, they are going to also make things a lot more complicated for you on the checking side, on the uh, saving side, and so on and so forth. So you do not want to have a situation where Chase will open a check systems account, a check systems notice on your account. You do not want that, okay? So if you have, uh, if you owe Chase money, contact the company and try to negotiate. Now, if Chase Collections is actually collecting for a third party, you want to also negotiate in that case, but you want to be a lot faster there. Remember that when we talk about uh, Chase Collections, you do have rights, okay? You do have rights to, uh, re when it comes to removing Chase Collections from your credit report, there are some rights and, uh, of course, privileges and also duties, of course, that the law has actually established for people like you. So you have the right to dispute any debt of yours that Chase Collections is trying to collect. And Chase Collections is actually governed by uh, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and the Fair Credit Reporting Act. So while this act seems very complicated, they provide a great deal of power to you if you know how to use uh, those laws. It's one of those things where you have to see, once again, what really works for you. That's why I was telling you a little earlier that if Chase, is, uh, Chase Collections is contacting you, you want to tell them very clearly to uh, conduct all correspondence, all communication in uh, writing. That way you have proof. You have uh, a uh, a paper trail, right? And that paper trail will be very important in uh, if they were to go a little further, then you have the opportunity to show a court of law that you were on the right side of the law, which you should be anyway. And uh, so Chase Collection actually has uh, a phone number, but it's just that they actually uh, change their phone number all the time. So it's better to, uh, when they call you, look at your caller ID and see the number they called you from. That's the number you have to call. And if you speak to someone, again, if you speak to someone, make sure that you uh, take the name of the rep you spoke to, the time you spoke to that person, and uh, the essence of the conversation, right? Because you want to keep really a paper trail. You want to keep uh, a trail, if you will. It doesn't have to be a paper trail, but you want to have a trail of all kinds of communication that you have with uh, Chase, uh, Chase Collections. But the bottom line is that it's just a lot better. I think I've said this before and I'm saying, it, I'm saying this again. 
you want to conduct, you want to keep all communications in writing, black and white, right? That way, everything is clear. And uh, it's not about, you know, I said this, she said this, I said that. No, everything is in writing. So if there's anything, a judge can go back to the written communication and decide, okay, here is what was said and what was uh, decided. Or you are able to uh, directly contact Chase Collection and have an agreement. In other words, it can be an installment plan. Okay, let's say you owe $15,000 and you realize that, hey, listen, having this on uh, your credit report is not a good idea. Not only in terms of your, in terms of your credit score, but also your future uh, prospects in credit, right? So you are able to actually have an account with Chase Collections. You can open an account where you agree to say, let's say every month you pay them uh, $15 or $20 or hundred bucks, depending on your resources. So that's totally possible. But remember that it's always a great idea to go through a credit repair company, like, you know, to kind of help you out, especially when the amount are large. If the amount, uh, if the amount that you owe Chase Collections is pretty uh, consequential, it's better that you actually uh, outsource the settlements or outsource the management of this amount to a third party. It could be a credit repair company or a debt, a debt settlement company. That way, you are pretty uh, good to uh, go in terms of uh, somebody helping you out, okay? And so it's always important to look at your resources and look at your, uh, your own experience in dealing with uh, removing collections from your credit report. If you have some experience, which I don't think you should, but if you do have experience in that in that department, then you can certainly actually try to remove uh, Chase collections from your credit report yourself. If not, you can just go through a third party. You can have a debt collection, I mean debt collection, a credit repair company help you out. And the credit repair company will uh, contact Chase collections and will make sure that uh, they have communications with them and make sure that they actually take care of your debt as soon as possible. But remember, everything starts with validating the debts. You want to make sure the debt makes sense, the debt is valid, this is real. Because the last thing you want is to actually pay the debt that somebody else owes, right? That would be really, really bad, especially if we're talking about large amounts. And if they were to sue you, they have to prove that you indeed owe the debt. And the thing about debt management is that you have a statute of limitations that the law has put in place to actually govern those uh, circumstances. Rem remember, there are two laws. They're really critical here. You have the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act or FDCPA or the uh, Fair Credit Reporting Act, the FCRA. So those are the two laws and uh, everything else is uh, you are good to go. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about how to remove Chase collections from your credit report. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time.